What's up guys? YouTube. <laughs> How are you guys doing? So uh, in my background, we're in one of my favorite parking garages. I think this place is pretty cool. Um, I hope that you guys can hear me. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty cold, quiet night. Uh, but I want to talk about my 2011 Lotus Evora S. And uh, I sold that car and it was the worst car I've ever had. I've been pondering this for a while and I'm thinking about like how I was going to share this on YouTube because um, I don't like to do like bashing videos of anything. I don't like to put negative stuff. I like to just be a positive, happy person. Um, I think it's a good way to live, so I try to live that way. Um, in my background, I got my beautiful 2000 Toyota MR2 Spider I've had for many, many years. Um, I currently also have in my garage a 2004 Celica GTS. And then of course in my garage, I also have another 2006 Lotus Elise Turbo. Um, I bought my 2011 Lotus Evora S um, in May, May of 2021, so this year. Um, I bought the car, I bought it from my friend who um, owns a dealership and he bought it from auction. Uh, an auction is not kind of what you guys think it is. Auction, actually millions of cars go through auction. Um, most dealerships, if they can't get a car sold, they just send it to another dealership and say, good luck, maybe you can sell it. So my car came from auction. Um, again, 2011 Lotus Evora S. It came from a Lotus of uh, Florida, Jacksonville, Lotus of Jacksonville, Florida. That's where the car was at last. It spent the majority of its life in California and then um, landed in uh, Florida for about a year or two and then landed in my hands. Um, I was the third owner of that car. So there's two owners and then I was the third. I, it was shipped up from Florida to me. I bought the car, I paid cash for it. Um, and I was very, very excited. Go look at the videos, I was extremely excited. It was supposed to be my daily driver. I actually sold my Mitsubishi Evolution 10 to replace with the Lotus Evora S um, as a daily driver. Big mistake. The car was a six-speed manual gearbox um, and that car has been plagued with problems ever since I bought it and um, I was actually underneath the impression that this was going to be a reliable car because it had the Toyota Camry V6 um, attached to a Lotus. That's what I say. So it is a Toyota engine. Toyota, I love Toyotas. I do, I really do. I really like the 2ZZs on them. I, I do like the 2GR, that engine, that the V6 that came with it. Uh, I like, you know, V8 Tundras. I like all those cars. So I had the impression that this Lotus was gonna be the best car that could be the best reliable, exotic, cool looking car. Six speed manual, supercharged. Supercharged, 350 horsepower, real drive. How can I go wrong? So I got the car at 46,000 or 47,000 miles, something like that on 46 or something like that. Bought the car, um, enjoyed it for a little bit. And what I mean by a little bit is 300 miles. I drove it 300 miles. I drove it from Washington to Portland, Oregon and back. When I brought it home that day, the car decided that it didn't want to go into gear. I parked it outside, went to go start the car up on like a Saturday to drive it, wouldn't go into gear. It just literally like didn't want to go into first gear, didn't want to go into gear. It just, when the car was on, it wasn't going. So uh, I limped the car over to Lotus um, dealership here in Washington, the Lotus of Bellevue. They're, they're called Park Place. And um, left the car there and they said, we'll take a look at it. They got back to me and said, hey, your car, it's a small pin. We'll fix it. It'll cost you 1700 bucks. It's pretty doable. We'll get it done. Uh, I left the car there on June 4th, so I had the car, I think I got the car like May 27th, left the car there like a week or two later, very short period of time, and um, yeah, left the car there, waited and waited, I said, hey, I want to use the car back before the July is going to be done, I said, no, not done, waited and waited, waited, um, then I went on a trip, I went to Egypt, and come back in October, you know October is when I come back, and finally they said, hey, your car is done. So it's been about three or four months at this dealership. They came back and said, by the way, your $17, $100 original quote, $1,700, is now $9,658. Like, that's 
in repairs and I put 300 miles on this car. So I was just like lost, like this can't be true, this isn't gonna happen, I'm not gonna pay for it, not gonna happen. Long story short on that, um, I ended up paying the dealership. Uh, I paid them I think $8,700 cash. The dealership wouldn't take a car. It was the worst car experience I've had in my life. Literally at any dealership, and I usually stay away from dealerships, but any, any place ever I've ever had, it was the worst. Um, the reason they said what was wrong with the car was is that there's, I think it's called the Clevis, C-L-E-V-I-S pin. It's where the clutch pedal and, 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 and the clutch, there's a, there's a box where your feet goes and where that was, where the clutch pedal was, it wore out. This pin, it looked like this, it wore out and they needed to replace it. They ended up telling me that they had to pull out the whole front clam, they pulled out the front windshield, they broke the front windshield. They made me buy a new windshield that they broke when they were moving it. It's $2,500 for the windshield. Uh, they made me pay for all the labor of removing the front clam and do that. They finally got it fixed. I took the car back and uh, when I took the car back, uh, I think a fan turned on. When I took the car back, um, crazy unfortunate. I might, we're gonna have to, it's getting a little loud. I'll see if you guys, I'll bring you closer. Let's go ahead and bring you closer. So I took the, uh, uh, when I took the car back, I, I paid them, or I didn't pay them. I said, I'm not gonna pay you guys, I want a better bill. And then I brought the car back and they said, the reason I brought the car back after they repaired it is because the car was not fixed. It did not go into gear. I drove it like three miles after they fixed it and the car had the same thing, it wouldn't go into gear. And uh, they get to me later, uh, they get back to me about two days later and said, so we did do all that work, you owe us $10,000 pretty much. Now we also unfortunately need to put a new clutch in your Lotus Evora S that I put 300 miles on. So how much is that gonna be? They said $6,500, $6,500 on top of the 9,600 plus tax. So it was like $17,000. Lotus Evora S, 2011, 47,000 miles on this car. Uh, I was just, I just couldn't believe it. So I got all that work done. The car was gone from, from June 4th or, or like May 28th or June 4th, I can't remember what it was, till October 1st. The car, I did not have the, I didn't get to film any YouTube content. I didn't get to film anything on that. I didn't, I didn't get to drive the car at all. It just sat outside. By the way, they left it outside, uncovered. Had pine needles all over it. The car was in horrible condition. And um, so I said, I'm not gonna do that. So my good, my friend, this is, he's a good friend, he did, he did the right thing. He ended up relisting the car back at auction. And it sold within, with a broken clutch um, within like 25 minutes. So people, the car still was, is desired. The car still about desired. Um, but I had to pay that 8,000. I ended up settling with them and paying the first bill for $8,700. I had to pay cash. I mean, can you guys, do you feel like my pain of this car? It's the worst car I've ever owned in my entire history of cars. I mean, it was just the horrible experience. Three, 400 miles and it cost me $8,700. Plus I had to license a car and do all that. Um, I would say overall I lost 10,000 US dollars. 10,000 US dollars for 300 miles on a car. Um, just the worst experience I've ever had in my life. Uh, and they said, you know, we fixed that Clevis pedal and you just never know on these 2011 Evoras, you just never know when the clutch is gonna go bad. Like, I, I just can't believe that. So ended up selling the car. I collected my money back. I took about um, an $8,700 loss, I know that, plus the taxes, whatever, about $10,000, $10,300, I think is what the total loss was. Hit on, on the Lotus Evora S. So I still own a 2006 Lotus Elise Turbo, uh, and it doesn't run, and it hasn't run for a very long time, like two years. So. Um, a nickname of Lotus is lots of trouble, usually serious, and it's a good nickname. It fits that car. Uh, if you buy a Lotus and you have an intent to daily drive it, it's probably not gonna hold up. 
That's my opinion and my experience with these two cars that I've owned. Uh, it's The Toyota part is good. They made a lot of those engines. They made a lot of 2ZZs. It is good. Everything that it's strapped to, aka the Lotus, is not good. Quality is poor. Um, build is poor. But, I'll say one thing, it is fun, they are fast. If you're gonna buy a Lotus, listen to my problem, listen to this, because you could have a similar, and it is a common, the dealership charges you fortune to fix on this. No one will work on this car besides the dealerships. Very difficult to forget someone that will work on a Lotus, any kind of Lotus, they just don't want to. Um, in addition to that, the frequent complaints that I received from the Lotus of Bellevue Park Place dealership is that Lotus, the company, does not give them good support. That's what they told me. We couldn't get this done because Lotus didn't give us the parts. We didn't have the parts and it took them a long time to get them to us. It took us you know, three months to get the parts from Lotus. Lotus would never answer their phone because they're on a different time schedule than us. We can only get our parts from Lotus of Hethel in, you know, in Europe. We can't get our parts anywhere else. We don't have that. So the dealership and the, the manager of the dealership and the owner frequently complain to me about how poor Lotus is. So that's my experience of, of, of Lotuses so far. I will never buy a Lotus again, ever. And I'm, I, you guys can kind of see I'm upset right now because those are my dream cars. The Lotus Elise and the Lotus Xyz are definitely my dream cars. The Evora just happened, um, and it was a horrible experience. I lost $10,000. I could have built such a cool car for $10,000. I mean, I could have built like an awesome car for $10,000. And instead, I drove 300 miles on a Lotus Evora S. Um, yeah, so the next owner bought the car. They were really thrilled about getting the car, is what I've told. They were told by the, uh, the dealership, my, my friend that owns the dealership. They were excited and they were gonna rip it out and put a new clutch in it. And um, they actually bought it for $5,000 more than I paid for the car. But I still took a hit due to taxes and due to them selling the car. I, I ended up still taking a hit, uh, about $10,000. It's just a horrible, horrible experience. Um, don't recommend it. Uh, this is my experience with Lotus, you know, no one ever made it right, none of the dealerships ever made it right. The time that it sat at the dealership, the, the expectations set by that dealership, the expectations set by Lotus of USA, it was all extremely poor. So that being said, I know that a lot of you guys, your dream car is like those Lotuses. Just be aware that you're going to get a Toyota engine or a 2ZZ engine, you're going to love that. But you, everything that the, the engine is strapped to is not good is not up to snuff, it's not good build quality. Um, and if you're okay with that, more power to you. Um, what I would recommend is if, you, if you're gonna buy a car like this and you want that, buy a car like this that's newer, that has warranty because they're probably gonna use it. In addition to that, uh, like a low car that you think would have low miles, because 40,000 miles on a car seems pretty low. On the Lotus, that's actually a lot, especially the Avoras. Um, and the whole dealership told me that the 2011 all the way up to 2017 all those Evoras were junk That's what the dealership told me. They told me you bought a bad year The 2011 is a bad year. So I don't understand how a dealership that sells you products And then they go and said, you know, if you get a 2017 and later, they're pretty good And then when the mirror comes out, we're gonna have a lot of trouble with that word for word That's what they said. So I don't know what to tell you guys stay away from that. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I'm just going to do one take. I was going to make a big series about complaining and doing every detail and showing you the emails and showing you how horrible this experience is, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. I just wanted to tell you my one experience with the 2011 Lotus Evora S. I sold my car. I sold my supercar. It was a hunk of junk. <laughs> um, so comment down below if you made it this far. The Celica blew up. I blew that up. Now I'm two cars down. I'm having a rough car month. Um, I got the Celica motor coming engine. It's, it's actually just landed here in Washington, so it's good to go. Um, we're gonna start that install process this week. <coughs> and uh, I should have the Lotus back picking, or the Lotus, the Celica back up. Um, probably like, probably like uh, next Tuesday or something like that. And I'll start doing content with that again as we do a turbo build for there. But I need a new daily driver. Uh, what about an Evo 8 or an Evo 9? Comment down below if you guys think I should bring one of those to the channel. 
or go back to an Evo 10? Or do you guys think I should do maybe like a Nissan 350Z, a Nismo? I was looking at that. Or should I get a pickup truck and do a pickup build? Comment down below what you guys think. Other than that, I appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe. Don't buy a Lotus Evora S. What a disappointment. See you guys in the next video.